Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Our question for today comes from uh, David, who is Sierra Victor Zero, Sierra Golf Sierra. And he is on the Alonisos Island in Greece. And he asks this question. Now, this is something that puzzles a lot of people who are new to HF. They've got their radio. They know it's a 100-watt radio, but it doesn't seem to be putting out 100 watts. Um, and there are two kinds of volt uh, or watt meters. And I've got one right here. I want to just show it to you. I'll turn on the power so you can see it. This right here shows you the forward power, <clears throat> and this is the reflected power. Now, it can do average with its in like that, or it can do peak power. Now, I want to show you the difference. This is really important. So I'm going to turn on my radio, turning the radio on over here. And um, we've got a spot with not much going on there. So I'm going to do an identification. I think I'm going to do an identification. Okay. Now, I want you to watch this first here. This is Kilo Echo Zero. Whoops. Boy, I'm on split. I don't want to be on split. There we go. This is Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf testing. Okay. Now, let's look up here at this meter. Okay, I'm going to go to average uh, power. Now, it's a 100-watt radio. There's a 100 right there. This is Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf testing. Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf testing. Now, no, it doesn't even go above 50. But now let's do a peak reading on this. This is Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf. KE0OG Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf is doing some testing here. Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf is testing, testing, testing. KE0OG. Now I'm going to turn that just back to average and Kilo Echo Zero Oscar Golf testing, testing, testing. Hello, testing, testing. Kilo Echo Zero done testing and clear. Now let's talk about what we just saw. Uh, the radio is a 100 watt radio. And when I talked on it and used the average setting, which means it's giving you the instantaneous reading, but note that that needle cannot follow the uh, voice peaks as they occur, but it kind of comes in the middle of it. And it seems like I'm not putting out much power, but when I use the peak, it shows 110 watts out, okay? Because there it's hitting a peak, holding it, for the next peak, holding it for the next peak, and so on, and very slowly adjust to the peak. And that is exactly the explanation that's going on here. He says, uh, I'm a follower, uh, I'm your follower, and have viewed many of your videos, especially when I was a newbie, having just gotten my license. Okay, here's the crux of the question. My radio output is set to 100 watts, so is mine. My wire antenna is resonant on the working frequency with no tuner. In this case, I'm using uh, the uh, DX Commander, okay, the classical version. And in this case, 20 and 40 meters, the visuar is less than 1.2 to 1, which is excellent, by the way. Um, I have a similar, a very good SWR with the DX Commander. My radio and my external meter show only a power output at best of 40 watts. Well, we just saw that. We just saw that. 40 watts. Okay. P 
peak when using phone or single sideband. Now, let me tell you when you would see max power. Use CW. Hold the key down. You'll see 100 watts. Okay? Um, but um, I have tested with CW digital modes and Ridian both achieve almost the output I have dialed in. Not 100 watts, of course, according to my meters. I do realize there is some coax loss, not enough to bother with in this case. I use both an ICOM IC7200 and a Yaesu FD891 with standard mics, and I bet they act the same way. I have tried adding mic gain, no, as well as adjusting various settings on the FD891. The ICOM has few settings. There are two settings that you're interested in. One is mic gain, and one is compression. And probably both of those radios have both of those adjustments. And the way you set those up is to follow the manual exactly. If you do not follow the manual, you will find that um, you'll, your sound will be distorted to those who are listening to you. Now, I leave compression on all the time because the ICOM compression uh, still leaves a very serviceable audio frequency uh, output. By the way, compression is a standard audio technique. Um, it's used in media all the time. I use compression on these videos. It tends to even out the uh, sound and make it sound a little deeper. Okay, um, I can shout into the mics, but that doesn't change much, nor will it, because you have an automatic level control in your radio that prohibits overdriving the amplifier. It's called the automatic level control, or ALC, and it will immediately cut your voice peaks down to keep them where they need to be, which means you're clipping your audio, which means distortion, okay? So again, you want to set them where they're supposed to be. The mo my question is, how can I increase the actual output going to the antenna? Well, the great secret is compression. Um, the duty cycle on spoken single sideband is about 20%. So on your averaging meter, you're going to see 20 watts of output. If you want to increase that, you put in compression, and if you set it up properly, you can get about 40 watts of average output. Now let me show you on the whiteboard what's going on. Let's see what's going on. Well, you've got an audio waveform, okay? And the output on single sideband looks just like this, okay? Except it's RF, okay? That would be an AM signal, but you get the idea. I mean, there's a Hilbert transform in here. But um, in any event, that's what it's going to look like. So your average reading meter, here's your peak. Here's your voice peak. That's 100 watts. Now, here's the other side over here. Nothing here approaches the peak. So where is the average power? The average power is kind of in here. Okay. So if this is 100 watts down here, this might be 20 and 20 on either side of that thing there, okay? Now, if you use compression, what you're doing is making the small parts a little bigger, okay? Leaving the uh, big ones alone, all right? and making these a little bigger, and that's where you get your 20, or your, uh, see, this was 20, 20, this would be 40, and 40, okay? So that's what you would get in there. Now, is this a 100-watt transmitter? Yes, it is, because on voice peaks, it's 100 watts. Now, the only way you can tell that is by, like my meter, uh, just a moment ago, is by measuring peak power, 
rather than average power. If you measured peak power, you would see that every time it hits a peak, it'll move that needle up to 100 watts and hold it there while waiting for the next peak. Gradually, it will decay until it gets another peak, okay? In other words, so, David, in other words, what is happening is that your transmitter is acting exactly as designed and exactly as it should. Uh, I would recommend going through the MFJ catalog or, or checking uh, your, um, your local suppliers for a peak reading watt meter and put that in line and you will discover that you are getting your 100 watts out. By the way, let me show you something. Many years ago in 1997, I had an article published in QST about solar power. Well, there is a Greek magazine. Now this is from 1977, so I don't know if this particular magazine still exists, but I think this is the magazine of the Greek equivalent of the ARRL. And there is my article interpreted and translated into Greek. Okay, and this is uh, uh, quite interesting to me because uh, I don't read Greek, but uh, I recognize little parts of it uh, in there. And uh, they put this article in here and it starts on page, oh, I can't tell really. Uh, Cut a little bit out of this. The magazine is quoting extensively from. Here it is. This is my article with the solar panel in the air. And all of this, it's in Greek, translated into the Greek. So I don't know, maybe you've seen this at some point, but this uh, is in uh, your. Uh, your local ham radio association uh, magazine, the Greek uh, version of the ARRL. I just just a little side note to uh, put in there. Um, whereas the English speaking people say it's all Greek to me, which it is. It's absolutely in Greek. I was I was quite flattered to see this magazine chose to translate that article. So David, there you have it. Uh, you have a perfectly well-functioning radio. That's exactly how it should function. Go through your manual and very carefully set up the speech amplification, which will be the mic gain, and very carefully set up the compression. And there is a way to do that so that it will not uh, be clipping your audio. You'll sound good, but you'll sound louder. Like I said, Compression is widely used in audio processing, and there's no reason not to use it all the time in ham radio. Don't turn up the compressor too far, or you will actually get to the point where it makes understandability even worse. If any of you watching would like to help support this channel, you certainly may do so, and I encourage it. Go to decastlercom support and look for a way there that you find helpful. And until we next meet, 73.